a balanced view um, is, is, is a simple training and offering for humanity to understand and directly recognize the true nature of reality. You see, now even that sounds like what are you talking about? So this is what the importance of what we call the four mainstays in the balanced view training, which is the support structure. So the four mainstays are the practice of, uh, the only real practice of balanced view, which is to recognize open intelligence for short moments, repeated many times until it becomes continuous. And uh, in order to do that, you need to know what open intelligence is. So I was a seeker for over almost 20 years and I never knew what I was looking for. I had words to describe what I was looking for. God, oneness, unity, bliss, lots of other foreign words that really don't make any sense to me as an Englishman. I don't actually know what it is. I might as well be looking for, like I said the other day, a little invisible goblin. You know, that's, it's, uh, it's, it's to search for something that you don't know what it is, is just futile. And so in this training, right from the beginning, right from the first open meeting, and we're going to do this right now, if this is your first or your 10,000th open meeting, we're going to together identify open intelligence. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not very exciting, but um, <laughs> if you stop thinking right now, to stop the train of thought or the, or, or the, the descriptions, for the briefest moment, what remains in your experience? And you can keep doing that, just stop thinking. Then a thought comes back, then just stop thinking. Now in your experience, what's there? There's an alertness, an openness, a clarity. It doesn't matter how you describe it, there's still something in your experience. Now we call this open intelligence in the Balance View training. You're free to call it whatever you like. But this innate quality is the same for every human being on the planet. Everyone has it. So if this is your first open meeting, congratulations, you've hit the jackpot. Your black belt, tenth dan, well done. <laughs> and all you need to do is recognize that whenever you remember. And it's as simple as, especially in the beginning, just stop thinking whenever you remember. Now it's important to emphasize that stopping thinking is not the practice because it's impossible to stop thinking. <coughs> the reason we say stop thinking is just so that you identify open intelligence. And what you'll see is that innate quality about you is present whether you're thinking or not. And as you continue to rely on short moments, you will not be able to differentiate between what we call the data, which is thoughts, emotions, circumstances and sensations, you will not be able to differentiate between the data and the open intelligence. And this is because data and open intelligence are a unified expanse, just like reflections in a mirror are, are inseparable. And so this is the practice of the balanced view training. And the power of that instruction of short moments, and for me, the key part of that instruction is repeated many times. So it's not about recognizing open intelligence and then recognizing open intelligence for an hour like keeping it there it's literally just acknowledging that it, it is present and then that acknowledgement vanishes then the thoughts will start and then you'll start getting lost in the thinking but then you'll remember oh wow I've got a choice I can relax and acknowledge open intelligence or not now that is the great simplicity of what it means to be a human being and we haven't learnt that. We've learnt that life is very, very complicated. We have billions of thoughts, every, if you're like me, every minute, that need constant management and, and rearranging in order to feel okay. And uh, this is totally exhausting and totally unnecessary. Now, in England, we have these magicians. They practice um, spinning plates on, uh, on sticks. I, I don't know if you have this. In, is it common in the world? Like they, you have a stick and they put a plate on it and it spins and it just stays there. But they have about 40 plates and they have to keep running around spinning them because if they don't they'll all fall down and smash. And this is what it's like to try and manage data. It's, it's like a fantastic, really incredible, but ultimately futile trick. 
You know, how many plates can you keep spinning at the same time before they all come crashing down? Now everyone here knows that. You know that it is, it is impossible to find well-being in your life by rearranging and modifying data. Now I'm not saying that in doing so you don't experience relief, temporary relief or maybe a lot of relief. But the point is, as a human being, that sets the bar so low. Relief, suffering, relief, suffering, relief, suffering. If that's your experience, then you can't help but see this in other people. And we are so loving and compassionate as human beings, we want to help people, well, we want to help ourselves first and foremost, to feel okay. That is the motivation of every human being on the planet. And it doesn't matter whether they're a mass murderer or, or the greatest saint that's ever walked the planet. The motivation of a mass murderer is to experience relief. And it just, it's just become so perverse the belief in the independent nature of data that the only way these people can experience relief is by killing other people. Now I'm not condoning that in any way but you understand what I'm saying. The motivation for every human being isn't, isn't to feel worse. Even the most insane person on the planet isn't doing what they're doing to feel worse. And so this is what we start to see when we start to rely on open intelligence. The great, real, the great unnecessary suffering we've put ourselves through in doing the best we can with tools that quite frankly are, are inadequate at best. So the way we approach our lives as human beings has not changed for thousands of years. Despite our tremendous advances in technology and thinking, conventional thinking, the way we use our mind in order to receive an experience relief has not changed since we were cavemen. And that basic mechanism is that I am not okay now, at some point in the future I will be okay. That has, hasn't changed. And this is the motivation and drive of conventional intelligence. And it doesn't matter how refined it is, and it doesn't really matter how spiritual it is. Now I can only share my own experience, but all of the spiritual practices I, were in, I, I was involved in prior to this training had that mechanism at, the, at their basis, that's, that's how I use them. If I, if I practice at some point in the future, I will feel okay. And that, that was no different to me trying to earn more money in order to feel okay, or to have more sex in order to feel okay, or to have less sex in order to feel okay. You know, I've got a, a list so long of things I tried to do or to not do in order to modify the flow of data, and it didn't do anything. It really didn't. And this is because of the nature of reality, this amazing display, is countless, ceaseless and unpredictable. You have no idea what the next thought is going to be. Okay, so did, did any of you think that I was going to say that? Did you know that that was going to happen? There's some people here that did know it was going to happen probably. But, the, but the, the point is, is that you, you have no idea what, what the next thought is going to be what the next circumstance is going to be. Uh, Candice used to say, uh, when I first came to, to the open meeting, she said, what would happen if all of your money disappeared? You had no money and everyone would just go, ah, ha, 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 And then what happened about three years ago, hundreds of thousands of people lost all of their money, all of their investments, gone. No recourse whatsoever to getting that money back. There's, there is no security in life other than the basic state which is open intelligence. And I don't mean to, to, to scare you or anything, but it's vitally important that you start to familiar, familiarize yourself with, with, with that about you which is totally stable, which is totally available in all, in all circumstances. And the miraculous thing that happened for me as a recognition was that it was my life that, that was evidence of this perfection. It was my life that provided me with the perfect opportunities to practice this, this practice of short moments. So things that I tried to modify for my entire life, like depression, anxiety, panic attacks, being overweight. See, that's still going on. These are things that I was convinced needed, needed to change in order for me to feel okay. 
But when I started to apply this simple instruction of short moments, I saw that it was my enormous stomach that was reminding me to recognize open intelligence. <laughs> wow, you know, and I don't want to leave too much to the imagination, but bowing down to my stomach in front of the mirror is something that I'd never done before. You know, it was, I was convinced that, that my, my body type was, was the source of all of my misery. And it's not, it's the, it's the source of complete exaltation. And this, this is what's on offer here. So in the talk today, you heard Candice saying, nothing needs to change about you. You are already perfect, you are already exalted. And the only way you're going to see that is if you let things be as they are. So we, do, we don't comment on practices. Um, so for example, mindfulness training, I, I'd ne I've never practiced that. The invitation is to test what's on offer here and see for yourself. Then you will know how this is different from any practice that you're involved in. So in the Balanced View training, I mentioned we have the four mainstays, which is the four, four support, supports of the training. So the first one is the practice of short moments. And you can do that anywhere. The second, the second uh, mainstay is the training. So we have written trainings. There, there's thousands of hours of free media. There are, are amazing books um, f for sale, but they're also free for download onto your, your iPad or whatever. Thousands of hours of talks and videos, all for free. Um, then we have meetings like this. And everything is geared, again, towards eliciting the direct experience of open intelligence in your experience. So the written trainings are the poetry of open intelligence. Just reading them, copying them out, elicits the, the experience of open intelligence directly for yourself. And you don't have to believe what I'm saying, you can test this. So you can test short moments, you can test um, utilising the training and the media. Uh, one of my favourite supports still is to just listen to talks while I'm going about my day. So powerful. And then here in Goa, you, I would really, really from the heart recommend that you test out some of the, the written training. So I know we have uh, one day introductory training coming up that you're very welcome to attend. And again, this is something that you can test. So the, the greatest scientific experiment and the greatest evidence you're going to find of the efficacy of this training is the laboratory of your own experience. So you test it and see if it works. If you, I could, we could have like a billion books proving that this practice works, but that's just meaningless. It's meaningless unless it's your experience, because <laughs> this practice is just, it, it's, it's the shizzle. As my, as my nephew would say, which means it's very, very potent and awesome. Um, and, and, but the only way you're going to know this is if you test it in your own experience. So my, my, my experience is I came to the first open meeting. I didn't uh, understand a single thing that was being said. The suggestion for me was to just cut, keep coming back. So I kept coming to the open meetings. Then I started to see in my own experience, wow, there is something about me that's just relaxed. And if I, if I just simply notice that, then my life gets better and I get to be quite a pleasant person. I used to be so argumentative, so sarcastic, so cynical, just really a, a lot of work to be around. And the reason for that was because I couldn't find any well-being in my life. And the only way I could get a tiny little piece of well-being was to drag people down into my pit of misery and despair. And I was really good at doing that. So when I started to notice open intelligence, you know, I d didn't even call it that then. I, it was just a niceness. It just felt good. And um, I, I, I could see it in my experience. And no matter how I felt, no matter what my circumstance was, I could recognize open intelligence just for a brief moment. And so I thought, well, if this works, just showing up, then how about doing some trainings? And I started doing trainings and I felt even better. And it was like, ah, what else can I do? This is really quite awesome. Then I started to serve. Now I hate doing things for other people. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm inherently and majestically selfish. And um, but then the most extraordinary thing happened. 
the more I served others, the better I felt. It was like, wow, this is, uh, I can think about this. You know, I'm, the more I serve others, the better I feel. Wow, that's great, it's all about me. I feel better, but then I'm doing all of this stuff for other people. But you see, then, then the penny dropped, and it took about six months for that to happen, of continuous service. It was like, wow, this is, this, is, this is my true nature. It doesn't matter how I label that great energy. I just happen to label it selfishness. It's inseparable from the beating heart, the heart essence of the entire universe. And what you start to see is that that exaltation that you might have only noticed in certain places is happening all of the time and it's inseparable from every single experience. And it's especially inseparable from what you don't like about yourself and what you've been trying to modify for your entire life. So from the heart, please stop and just test what's being offered here, just for a week and see what happens. It's just, you know, it's time to stop treating yourself like you're some sort of commandant in a concentration camp of data, you know, marching around and beating yourself because you're thinking this way and you, because you can't get rid of this thought or you can't modify this thought. It's a horrible, horrible, violent way to treat yourself. So give yourself the great gift of, of just testing what's on offer here. You know, I'm not, I'm not asking you to believe a single word that's being said here. We, we as trainers only share our own experience of the simple reliance on the support structures.